गुड आफ्टरनून कैसे हैं आप बस ऑल वेल आप कैसे हैं मैं बहुत बढ़िया आई एम सॉरी आई कुंड कनेक्ट विद यू अर्लियर एंड आई एम ग्लैड आई गॉट द ऑपर्चुनिटी टुडे नहीं नहीं वंडरफुल वंडरफुल आई थिंक इट्स अ गुड थिंग एंड यू नो बिकॉज़ आई हैड मेड अ कमिटमेंट टू यू एंड सो आई मस्ट फुलफिल माय कमिटमेंट थैंक यू सर बिकॉज़ यू हैड सो मच ऑफ नॉलेज एंड आई वाज लाइक I have to get this knowledge for myself and those people who follow me. So this is the correct medium for that knowledge to come out. And so here we are. So, sir, today that I would like uh, today that I would like to ask you uh, your opinions, your views is something on the stereotypicality that we see in Indian cinema, cinema in general, and the influence of movies. or you can say the recent uh, craze ott on youth and how you think your views can help us change it or reform it well uh, you know stereotypicality is common in uh, all types of movies and cinema and art forms across the world uh, for instance if you watch um, a hollywood movie in a hollywood movie they would typify how a russian is uh, how an american is so when a russian is largely uh, you know a very cold uh, very calculative very methodical very disciplined uh, an american uh, on the other hand is motivated very individualistic and so, so there are stereotypicality uh, issues across the world in cinema however in indian context uh the stereotypicality uh has not just uh, accentuated and misrepresented but it has made a deep and profound impact on the way uh our youth thinks about those particular stereotypes for okay. instance um why is uh, a, a sikh character uh, always uh, uh, you know a buffoon in a movie why are six uh, projected as laughable uh, as comic relief it would be rare to find uh, a sick person uh, who is you know like us you know a, a normal person a normal conduct a uh, large percentage of movies as a matter of fact my book uh, you know actually gives out numbers uh, more than 80% of uh, the way they are projected so uh, then when you experimentally assess it a lot of people believe that that that, that there is a, a high degree of um, uh, comic or or comedic or buffoonery uh, in in a sick individual well, that might not be the case it's like all chinese do not know how to do karate uh, you know that's a positive thing but here it's a negative thing so yeah. a person might think that a chinese knows karate and chinese may not know karate but that's all right but yeah. here uh, you are projecting uh, an entire uh, you know community uh, in in a negative uh, light uh, that is not true and that does not result in an advantage to the community or to people who are perceiving that community perfect i agree with you here target is Uh, now a karan johar film obviously is a glossy film uh, their uh, narratives and the screenplay and their cinematography is completely unreal and that is the that is how karan johar is known it's not realistic cinema it is not an anurag kashyap cinema it, it is a, a on the top overboard oh. kind of i don't know is, is anurag kashyap cinema realistic cinema <laughs> i don't know that's how no, you I, mean. i don't know i mean i don't know but i am just trying to understand that i agree with you that how these other countries now are kind of banning that whole perfection in their advertisements because they don't want the layman to be kind of diverted by those advertisements and you know start getting into that zone ki oh my god my body is not perfect i don't have the perfect uh, you know body shape and stuff like that and go into any kind of depression or mental health problems but then social media also does that social media has those filters and we upload our pictures our videos and our photos using that various kind of filters want thing to look good so somewhere i think it's a responsibility cumulative responsibility as well as business happening on the side where i don't think we can just blame one cinema which is bollywood we need to 
collectively figure out where things are going wrong <clears throat> if, that is my thought process well uh, let me from what you have spoken yeah uh, if i may if i may come to two or three areas where everybody will will agree okay so because uk is um, looking at you know maybe censoring some of the advertisements where there are unattainable uh, bodily standards and are unattainable standards of beauty us uh, has been after uh, all of these for a long time in advertising they have been attempting to introduce more regular uh, sized uh, uh, models and in advertising they have been attempting to uh, for instance not so smoking bans for instance you know there is a warning whenever there is a smoking scene uh, whenever alcohol is consumed there is a warning so what does this mean this means that there is an impact if there was no impact why would there be warnings and it also demonstrates that there is a negative impact if there was no negative impact there wouldn't be all these warnings so there is well established research which demonstrates that projecting women in a certain way projecting alcohol projecting drugs projecting um, smoking impacts the ones who view and impacts them negatively perfect right so when all i am saying through my book as well as my research is that there has to be accountability okay so when you can when you put a warning for cigarette smoking in a movie why aren't you putting a warning when you are misrepresenting people why are you not putting a warning when you are showing such um, uh, i would say whimsical uh, fantasia based colleges uh, when you show uh, characters uh, who are stereotypified why there are no warnings i mean are those less important than cigarette alcohol drugs and women no 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 then are you saying that cinema which is a you, which is a product of fiction cinema which is selling fictional stories that cinema has to put a warning that the fictional stories that we are selling for business purpose comes with this warning because no no okay okay because social so media one of the things one of the things which has been done yeah in last 10 or 15 years is whenever there is a smoking scene a warning on the screen appears whenever okay. there is an alcohol scene a warning on the scene appears now i'm not saying that that is the best remedy but that is a recognition that there is a problem okay right okay that this has an impact on the ones who are watching those movies and the ones who are watching those scenes there is an impact right okay. so okay. if the cigarette smoking and alcohol has an impact then caricaturing women presenting women in in uh, extreme risque outfits presenting women as objects um, uh, objectifying women uh, you know uh, presenting youth uh, who are uh, uh, you know uh, who are acting in an inappropriate manner in an inappropriate place denigrating institutions uh, would that not have impact if you continuously demonstrate that every single movie which is based on a, a courtroom scene has a has either a corrupt judge or a buffoon judge would that not have an impact on the entire institution of judiciary if in every movie you are going to demonstrate that a politician is corrupt and politician is bad would that not have an impact on the institution of uh, of politics Uh, perfect all i'm saying that it's an impact perfect but when uh, likewise i agree that if you represent that every judge in the courtroom is corrupt it affects the image of the judges if you do the same with politicians or police it affects the image of the politician and the police when you see social media i upload a picture i have various filters the filters are to make me look fair the filters are to make me look a shade lighter or uh, sometimes the body type gets better with the filters that are being used on instagram which is a worldwide used platform so here nobody says that using this filter comes with a warning 
you use the filter you might see the person in real life the person might look some something altogether different there is a very thin line where we are comparing alcohol drugs and obviously a beat song and bringing religion into it and supporting who said that Pardon who me? said there is a thin line so, why are they not similar why are they not similar i'd like to ask you a question you okay. know uh and first of all you mentioned that representation of judges as corrupt influence impacts the image of the judges no it not only does the impact impact the image of the judges it impacts the youth's perception about the judicial institutions okay. so when in movies you project such things repeatedly stereotypically it reduces that particular institution so why are movies continuously not sensitive to the impact of them denigrating institutions in the minds of indian youth because But, if they are if they know that presenting smoking presenting alcohol can impact the youth so can denigrating judicial institutions impact their impression of the judiciary uh, impact uh, continuously demonstrating politicians as corrupt having an impact on the youth about the entire political system are we attempting to create an impression in the minds of a youth that nothing really works only But, uh, only a maverick hero is the one who is the right in this society i have done research in uh, you know on on hundreds of movies now and that has been by and large the trend okay but sir when these films are being telecast on an ott platform or on big screen uh, don't they have a disclaimer saying that it is a product of fiction and uh, it is solely based on imaginary you know whatever the legal language is so then that should make them pass the whole thing of you know deliberately trying to target a judiciary system they might just want to show the reality to the world to the society why don't they why don't they why don't they put right in the beginning of the movie a disclaimer that all the smoking scenes all the alcohol scenes contained are are fictitious and please they are harmful and they are bad why do they have to put it when the scene is going on Because, because the impact of the initial disclaimer is extremely low most people don't even look at it doesn't even catch attention now if that disclaimer that is where my public policy input is and that's my recommendation to the censor board is that the biggest star of the movie actually should should be uh, making a 30 second pitch right in the beginning of the movie that this is a work of fiction um uh, and uh, the and the scenes representing either historical issues or relate issues related to women are all fictitious then okay. people might be able to listen to it rather than just putting a bland disclaimer at the outset i'm asking you why don't they put a bland disclaimer about smoking and drinking at the outset and why do they put it at the scene because i think probably that's the law but yes what you are saying also makes a lot of sense that if uh, the film has such a huge impact and it can cause a lot of uh, activities which are unlawful or detrimental to the women in the society Ma'am, then the films have an impact let's just you know there is there are thousands of papers empirical okay. papers which have examined the impact of movies on the youth particularly and in the population in general that has been empirically established that there is an impact okay now sir i understand your point of view and i agree to the fact that a hero or the main flag bearer or the captain of the ship should do that 10 minute or a 5 minute you know, video at the no, start no no 30 seconds 30, 30 seconds. seconds but uh okay but in this country where uh, you have such big names who have been associated with the film industry uh, the bharts the khans the kapoors uh, they have actually gone and got an adult film star of a different country to this country and given her an inroad into the indian cinema now when you do something like this this is much more dangerous than the blatant content that is coming out in the form of a song in the song you see a dipika padukone who is a 
you know established actress wearing a a swimwear outfit and doing a dance on a beach but when you have people who have a past of doing something which is illegal in india they coming on the screen and then portraying characters which fall the fiction of the storyboard of the film a uh, filmmaker's version then indirectly they are creating more search engines to go towards their profession and that is also causing a lot of crime so isn't that an activity which is affecting the youth of this country because suddenly you see lot of indian actresses indulging in the same kind of profession and i find it more detrimental because these ladies are doing it willingly seeing the success of a foreigner in the indian film industry foreign adult star so that is more detrimental than those things that you see in a song on a beach i feel well you know i don't know the extent of detrimental uh, of any of these instances that you are pointing out i am not privy i am not uh, i have not uh, examined this empirically as to which is more which is less but we are in agreement that all of this is detrimental okay we are in agreement now the degree could vary what is detrimental what is more detrimental what or what is less detrimental that is something for for uh, researchers to investigate and ascertain but it's like we we know we know that a um, lot of what is presented in the bollywood movies is detrimental they stereotypify they they create low self esteem in the youth they also uh, denigrate certain religions uh, they have uh, you know the scene in the movies where we used to take shapath on geeta disappeared uh, this country has almost 80% uh, percent hindus and uh, you know in in court rooms or in many places or even in in uh, various institution the typical oath used to be by holding your putting your hand or hand over bhagavad gita that scene has disappeared so bollywood has uh, has really uh, you know attempted in my view to influence the way things are functioning rather than attempting to represent what is happening in society so uh, bollywood has taken uh, some instances in occasions and magnified them to make them look like this is an everyday occurrence uh you know that i believe is detrimental it creates um, conflict in the minds of the youth makes youth more subversive i don't believe that all the politicians in india are corrupt i don't believe that all the policemen in this country are corrupt i don't believe that all the judges in this country are corrupt i don't believe that all the bureaucrats in this country are corrupt i don't believe that all the teachers all the professors uh in this country are the ones who cannot teach as has been demonstrated in movies and they are buffoons none of them is a serious person i don't believe that all the lawyers are about to suck money from individuals but that i believe is what has been largely represented in bollywood movies they okay. have never projected um never by never i mean vast majority of the times i mean 95% of the times they have done it wrong maybe few percent they have done right where is please tell me a single movie in the last 20 years where they have demonstrated a professor who has impacted the lives of individuals who has changed the course of lives of individuals who has given education we often times make fun of professors we make fun of priests please show me a movie where they have given regard to a priest in most of the movies they would show a priest is willing to take 500 rupees to change the date of the wedding i mean that sort of denigration over a long period of time seriously impacts how the youth views our society through the lens of bollywood okay sir so i feel that you have a lot of grievances uh, for bollywood when indian cinema does comprise of the south film industry also and the adult porn star that i was talking who has got an inroad into the bollywood industry she is making an inroad into the south industry also so here i agree that the content needs to be monitored but how you are casting certain people who have a history into your projects and portraying them in a nice way also creates an imaginary for lot of indian girls to take up a profession which is banned in india 
that is porn industry is banned in india but you see lot of indian actresses going towards erotica industry voluntarily to kind of make their name and fame the way that particular foreign adult canada based porn star has got fame in india and now is getting inroaded into south industry also also you said that professors have not been projected in a particular nice manner i agree there might be 80% of the films in bollywood where the projection may be wrong but then there is a chakde film where a sharukh khan was inspiring the girls indian hockey team he's girls he's not a professor coach he's not he a professor he was a coach there's a difference between a professor and a coach i'm giving you an example of an inspirational character so you i'm are giving able you to give me you are giving me an example of one movie of the last 100 years and let me let me let me also, let me let me talk about that example and it came no, no, to let me, no no let me let me let me give you a rebuttal on that movie itself yeah that movie has been projected yeah as a movie which is based on a uh, true uh, 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 representation of somebody uh, from indian hockey is that a fair statement please continue i want to hear your this thing no i mean was it not popularized in the media that chakde india as a movie has been based off factual events maybe the media publicized it at that time because i'll have to dig up the articles to see because frankly speaking i'm just talking about the character that you said but let me let me let me let me tell you that movie was projected as one which has been picked up from story of one of the players of indian hockey okay the projection uh, it's it was projected there it's yeah. a true story and how okay. it was how it was um, uh, how the representation of that particular character is a far cry from what actually happened with that individual that hockey player who actually ended up coaching Uh, indian women's team as well um it's a far cry okay far too much liberty was taken again a stereotypical image of victimhood was presented when what? really what? when what? really that victimhood did not exist okay what about mangal pandey what about milkha sen these films have been inspirational so you have good content and you have bad content you have actors sometimes being part of good projects in bollywood and you have actors sometimes part of bad projects Ma'am, you That miss goes- you miss my point you miss my point yeah. i you can name you can probably name 50 movies in the last 100 years which were great and which have had a positive impact uh, but that's only 50 we are producing between 1700 to 2000 movies every year uh, one can imagine out of those 1700 to 2000 movies there are about 50 odd movies every single year which have a significant impact and of those 50 odd movies every single year there are about 5 or 10 which have a significant impact so all i meant all i stated and i'll restate that one more time uh, if you will pick up a typical hollywood movie i'm just drawing a parallel so that you can understand mm-hmm. hollywood movies attempt to build individual trusts in institutions okay they never denigrate a banker they never denigrate a professor they never denigrate the army they never denigrate the police they never denigrate the political system they don't denigrate the institution of schools by and large by and large and even when they do so they make that movie based on realistic events when the denigration takes place however it's just the opposite here in the last maybe 20 to 30 years what we have seen um is that everything you please again how often is army shown in a positive light no how so, often, uh, so how often is how often is is uh, i'll go back again how often is politician shown in a positive light army shown in a positive light uh, professor shown in a positive light uh, lawyer shown in a positive light engineer shown in a positive light a banker shown in a positive light a priest shown in a positive light you would have to have 
that number on your fingertips is a very small number. 95% of the times we're mocking these institutions and which has resulted in our youth having low self-esteem over the last 20, 30 years. They are self-loathing. They are conflicted about their self-identity owing to a, a, a continued media diet which has been fed to them, which questions, which really questions every single day as to what the reality is. Okay, so from your point of view, your perspective, your experience, you are saying that all this is reflected only in Bollywood and not in any other film industry of uh, India, the South film industry? Their projects well, I don't... Not, I have not really uh, uh, studied the, the, the South Indian film industry. Uh, we when have... we were examining in my book and, and in, my, in, my, in my research, I have examined uh, the Hindi films as well as the, uh, the Hollywood movies. So we've okay. drawn parallels. Let me give you another instance, just to just to enlighten, uh, you know, uh, a little bit of, of the subject area. Uh, in, in a typical Hollywood movie, when we examine Hollywood movies and hundreds of them, uh, more than three quarters of the movies, which means more than 75 percent of the movies, Hollywood movies will have a American flag somewhere in the backdrop. You know, that number is below 20 percent in Indian movies. In recent times, the flag has made an appearance in Indian movies in very recent times. Otherwise, uh, you would it would be rare to find an Indian flag hoisted somewhere even in the background. In American movies, you would oftentimes, more often than not, you'll find an American flag in it. So what does this demonstrate? It gives you a subtle signal of where the movie is based, people's pride in who they are. At the end of the day, if you remember, back in the 50s and 60s, Hollywood was one of the tools, one of the tools to create a yearning for the people living in Eastern Europe, for the West, particularly for the Americas. Movies were shown by American diplomats in Eastern Europe to create a yearning for the American way of life. Well, 40 years ago, it was same for India. Indian film industry, Indian movies were yearned and they created a yearning for Indianness, an Indian way of life through its movies in Central Asia, in Russia, in Eastern Europe, in Middle East, in North Africa, even in South, 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 South Africa. Today, um, I think uh, the footprint has shrunk. Uh, it has become concentrated where Indian diaspora does exist. And that's why you would see, but the foreign component uh, the foreigners watching and having an impact and learning of Indian culture and having a yearning for Indian life has reduced significantly. Okay. Okay. Now I am very uh, inexperienced to question your judgment and question your experience. I have obviously countered your arguments as per my experience and my thought process because I am associated with the industry. And uh, I have seen how sometimes and most of the times it has spread Hindu phobia and I have obviously voiced my dissent over it. But recently I find that, uh, you know, things are not always wrong and things are not always right by any of the parties. It's always, uh, you know, an agenda being pushed by people having their own vested interests. But yes, like you say, that we need to have accountability, just like we have accountability of government officials. There needs to be accountability of people who earn so much of money by kind of uh, selling dreams or giving hopes or creating fiction. Because at the end of the day, cinema does affect the minds of the youth. But uh, I would... You see, I, I, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not averse to, I'm not a communist, you know, I'm, I'm a... Uh, I, I'm a firm believer in free enterprise and, uh, you know, I believe uh, that all filmmakers should be allowed to present their art, their artistic representation in the manner they desire. However, 
there are two caveats one when you are presenting your art form or your demonstration of your uh, of, of your view of a particular art form you must realize that we are in india and you must take care of the sensitivity of indian people so what you essentially want to demonstrate through your art must take into account sensitivity uh, of the people that's point number one. Second caveat is that these movies in india in indian context um, do not have that sort of a, a, a restriction in terms of viewership particularly when such movies are now available freely on internet and internet platforms uh, who is watching what is getting watched uh, is is not really controlled to a great degree by uh, by people so therefore because this content is freely available the makers of movies the people who are representing their art should be cognizant of the fact that if they are presenting material which is going to have a deep and profound impact on the youth they must either censor it or label it with appropriate warnings which are consumed by individuals not just a disclaimer at the outset which nobody reads i hope uh, people who can do that filmmakers who can do that they do that but i also hope that uh, along with filmmakers we have accountability by people who hold uh, important government positions in our country the politicians because after all cinema is just a part uh, as a country, as such a vast country, having uh, such secular uh, diversities, I believe that the people who run this country need to be much more uh, accountable also to the layman, because uh, as an Indian citizen and as an artist, I feel that's also that also needs a direction when it comes to being accountable, apart from the filmmakers and their choice of films and scripts and fiction and everything let me let me since you have mentioned the word since you have mentioned the word accountability more number of times um if you really believe yeah that films are a demonstration or presentation of art mm. and artistic endeavor mm. well, what happens to the independent movies uh research indicates that there are about 13 14 thousand screens available in india mm. when a large film a big film banner releases the movie they consume about seven to eight thousand of those screens by a single movie mm -hmm. uh, they are blocked right so what about an independent filmmaker how much of a space is provided uh, by uh, the the filmmakers association if they have one or uh, the the movie uh, theater association if they have one for the independent filmmakers so if you were to make a movie would you even find space to showcase your movie now competition commission of india if there was any other industry here they would regulate this that monopolistic practices when you're monopolizing screens is also anti-competitive in nature you cannot just have uh, if there are, let's say, 15,000 screens, 14,000 screens, screens in India, and you block uh, maybe 10,000 of those for a movie, uh, isn't that monopolistic in nature? So it what is. do you need to do about that? That, I believe, is also another subject for scientific inquiry. And that is also uh, an area for public policy debate as to how uh, space could be provided to the actual independent filmmakers who would want to showcase uh, their uh, take on uh, particular subjects and their demonstration of the art of filmmaking okay and i use the word accountability because see i have just been even informed like one two days back that a pakistani film is being released in india that has got actors like fawad khan and mahira khan in it and i'm shocked 
that here you create uproar for an Indian Muslim, and here you have a Pakistani film releasing in India when apparently this whole uh, transaction of film business between India and Pakistan was stopped or put on a hold after the Uri attacks. So accountability, yes, you need to make sure. how your foreign films are coming in especially from pakistan and countries with whom you don't have great relation and uh, where the feeling and the emotions of the indian people get affected because we get affected when we see that pakistani films and pakistani actors are getting more you know credibility and opening in india when our artists are not getting the same reciprocal reactions in that country so accountability yes for those people who can control all this now an indian filmmaker can't control the release of a pakistani film in india it's only people who are holding that positions can control and i think that film is releasing in pvr cinemas or something like that that's what i kind of got to know also so yes because india is an emotional country and we all get affected well i i have a i have a small uh, comment to make in this uh, india is a large it's the third largest economy in the world okay it has one of the largest film industries in the world okay india is a very very big economic powerhouse yes people will come to india to work from all across the world and try to seek work in india now uh, because india is large india is is very strong uh, people will come and seek work here now who to allow who not to allow Uh, is predicated on two 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 very important criteria. One, uh, the free entrepreneurship and entrepreneurial proclivity of the people, and second, uh, the government. Uh, I think they would take a call. I am quite confident that um, there would be a balance between um, the uh, entrepreneurial proclivity of the industrialists to to create business and uh, the interests of the nation, which are being watched by the government. So somebody will take a call on that. perfect perfect <laughs> great so uh yes so you are obviously in a position where you can influence a lot of younger generation and i hope they get much more influenced by your views and experience in your college and wherever you can influence them because the best thing about india is that we can give a point of view we live in a democratic country we are allowed to talk and you know express ourselves uh so i think i have taken a lot of your time it's been uh, thank 45 you. thank minutes. you very much but, but i think you you've said it very well i have traveled uh, over dozens of countries across the world and there is no more democratic country than ours we are truly democratic people actually have free will uh, and india is not just democratic but india is also a very forgiving country if yes. the citizen of uh, of our country makes a mistake Uh, we are very forgiving uh, many of the western european north american uh, countries are not that forgiving when it comes to uh, people making a mistake we are very forgiving uh, we are very generous and that comes from uh, you know heritage which documented heritage of about 12000 years uh, and undocumented i don't know how many thousand it's collective wisdom i believe that uh, the next generation uh will take advantage of this uh, great indian wisdom which has been built in and will be available to you on smartphones because this intellect is now available in the palm of your hand yeah and i think that's the best way because the younger generation is so much glued on to it that i think they'll be able to decode that information faster and implement it in their lives and yes and i hope uh, we are able to figure out our way of being accountable in our lives so that we are at least making an effort to be good indian citizens at least i try to be <laughs> absolutely thank you thank you sir for speaking to me and uh, hope to speak to you again soon sometime whenever you have time on various other topics thank you namaste jai hind jai hind thank you